Blondertongue is happy to help with the alphabet soup that exists in the cable television technology realm. This time we'll be talking about encoding. So what is encoding? Encoding is basically the process of converting data from one form to another. There are several types of encoding including audio and video, image, and character encoding. We'll stick to audio and video in the CATV environment. When encoding, the data is often compressed to save bandwidth. As encoding techniques have evolved, the data and bandwidth have reduced, so more channels can be accommodated in the same spectrum. When encoding, standard interfaces are employed so the receiver of the information can decode the data in real time. If you're unfamiliar with acronyms like HDSDI and ASI, you might want to take a look at the Digital Interfaces Alphabet Soup. Once the signal is received at the encoder, there are several steps for transmission in a digital format. The steps depend on the type of incoming signal. A composite or component signal is in an analog form, so it must be digitized first. An ASI signal is essentially ready to be modulated to a digital channel. When encoding, other information must be included with the program data for the receive site. We'll cover these in more detail, so don't worry too much about this, but the types of data that can be included are MPEG format, bit rates, and PSIP. This diagram shows you the steps to encode video and where the interfaces we've talked about fit in. The SDI or HDMI sources carry uncompressed signals. They are then encoded into MPEG-2 or 4 transport streams. Several transport streams can be packaged into one ASI stream. And finally, the ASI streams are qual modulated for delivery over coax. MPEG stands for Moving Pictures Experts Group, which is part of the International Organization for Standardization, International Electrotechnical Commission, which is always referred to simply as ISO or ISO and IEC respectively. MPEG-2 and 4 are two different compression schemes to reduce the size of the video files, while still maintaining a high quality picture. They are lossy compression types, which means some bits are removed during compression. MPEG is designed to support a wide range of applications and services of varying bit rate, resolution, and quality. Both standards have several different profiles and levels to ensure interoperability with the receiver. Profiles are determined for various applications and provide a baseline set of capabilities. Levels are constraints indicating decoder performance for a specific profile. So why do you hear MPEG-4 sometimes and other times H.264 or H.264? And what are the differences? Bottom line, for what you're dealing with, it really doesn't make a difference. The two standards are jointly maintained to ensure they have identical content. Like MPEG-2, MPEG-4 was developed by the ISO IEC MPEG group, whereas H.264 was developed by the ITU-T Video Coding Experts Group, or VCEG. ITU-T stands for International Telecom Union Telecommunication Standardization Sector. Together, these two bodies make up the Joint Video Team, or JVT. Out of the 28 different parts to MPEG-4, Part 10 covers video compression methods and is the Advanced Video Codec, or AVC. Other parts deal with compression for other applications like mobile, handheld, wireless, and 3D. MPEG-4 is one of the most highly used formats for recording, compression, and distribution of HD video due to its lower bandwidth requirements. Within Part 10, there are 21 different profiles, again, to target specific applications. For non-scalable 2D video, there are 10 profiles. The other 11 profiles deal with professional production, scalable video coding, and multi-view video coding for 3D. We'll now switch topics to audio encoding. MPEG-1 Layer 2, MP2, is used in movies, digital audio video, and broadcast applications. It supports bit rates up to 128 kilobits per audio channel, 256 for stereo, and typical sample rates are 32, 44.1, and 48 kilohertz. AC3 Dolby Digital supports sampling up to 48 kilohertz and have bit rates up to 384 kilobits per second. AC3 is a lossy format designed for efficient encoding of surround sound 
developed to support motion picture presentations in theaters and at home. Commercial DVDs use 192 or 224 kilobit per second bit rates. A DVD amounts to 6.44 megabits per second, and it's eight channels of 7.1 Dolby surround sound. Pulse code modulation, or PCM, is a method used to digitally represent sampled analog signals. It is the standard form of digital audio in computers. PCM audio is lossless, uncompressed audio. Therefore, it can be 10 times the size of MP2 or AC3 files. PCM encodes a single sound channel, interweaving and synchronizing multiple PCM streams for multiple audio channels. Comparatively, six channels of PCM audio have a bit rate of 5.184 megabits per second, whereas AC3 encoder compresses this to 384 kilobits per second. We hope this helped you with the alphabet soup that exists in our industry. Please see the support section of the Blondertongue website for more resources. In particular, a lookup summary of the various acronyms included here can be found in the Blondertongue reference guide. You can also request a hard copy of this pocket guide on the Publication and Request to Catalog page under the Support tab.